Welcome back to our webcast series on perspective projection. In this video we're going to continue on from our last video on auxiliary vanishing points by looking at how to get an auxiliary vanishing point for a line that is sloping uphill and a line that is sloping downhill. So what we'll do is we'll start by just looking at the uh, scenario that we're looking at um, at the moment. So as you can see we have our 2D of our object here. So we have the two objects in plan view, the picture plane, the ground line, the horizon line all set up for us and we have our spectator um, standing here like so. Same thing applies over here we have our 3D view so we can see we have our picture plane, our ground, our spectator, our horizon line and we have our two objects which in this case are two wedges um, so wedge number one and wedge number two and if you look at the two objects you can see that wedge number one here is sloping upwards as it moves away from us so the nearer point is lower than the further away point which is higher so it's sloping upwards and our second object is sloping downwards so the nearer part is higher than the further away part, so it's sloping downwards as it moves out away from us. Um, down in the bottom here you can see we have the uh, front elevation of the object, so both wedges are exactly the same, so only for orientation and which way they're sloping. So we're going to begin the question um, by locating our vanishing points and our auxiliary vanishing points. So like the last um, video, if you remember when we talk about vanishing points, we said there's two components that we need to worry about. We need to worry about the direction, first of all, and we need to worry about the slope of it. So if you take a look at this wedge here, here you can see this wedge contains this line here, which has direction, but is level, so there's no slope on it. And above it here, we have a line that's moving in the same direction, but has a slope. And like we, b we know that both of them are moving in the same direction, because when we look at it in plan view, both the slope line and the level line one on t are one on top of the other. So they are actually moving in the same direction, only the slope is what's different between the two. So in these type of questions, what we need to first of all work um, account for or work out is the direction. So we're going to work out for our level line first of all, direction only, and then we'll deal with the slope afterwards. So we're going to deal with lines moving in this direction. So we go parallel from our spectator to the picture plane, bring it up onto the horizon line, VP1 is located then. Same thing applies in our 3D and because it's a level line our vanishing point um, is on the horizon line. Same thing then with direction number two. So direction number two is going in this direction here. Again level, so direction number two and again it uh, is on the horizon line. So in our 3D there it is there and again because it's level it's on the horizon line. So what we now want to do is we want to account for the slope of our object. So the slope of our object um, gotten in exactly the same way, this is our slope, so we, our spectator looks up parallel with that and you can see our auxiliary vanishing point where it hits the picture plane is directly above our vanishing point for direction only. So because our this line here and this line here, our level line, have the same direction, one will be directly above the other. Um, what we have to work out is the height, so how much is it? Um, now we know that if we were to take this scenario here, this slope line and this level line, well they both appear one top of the other in our plan view. So we don't want to have to draw an auxiliary of that or look in from the side of that. So the method we used, or we have saw in the last video, was to rebat that triangle. So we're hinging this triangle here off our level line, we're knocking it down flat, and we're going to draw it as if it was in a knockdown position, like so, a rebatted position. So to do that in our plan view, this is our hinge line, so we're using this level line here as our hinge line, so this is going to be the base that we're going to work from. You can see the angle that we'll be looking at hasn't changed when it's rebatted down, so we have the front elevation of our object here which can locate us the slope. We can either measure the angle with a protractor or we can use the measurements that were given and construct the angle here in our object. So that's what we're going to do. So first of all we're going to take our distance out, so distance x here, and I'm going to come out the distance here on my hinge line and it's very very important that you do you work with your direction line or your hinge line for that and then we have our direction y which is perpendicular to that so we're coming out perpendicular here at the same distance so there is our triangular wedge drawn in so that's the angle drawn in off of our hinge line so to locate our height for our auxiliary vanishing point you can see there's our hinge line there's our line here the angle that they're contained is actually at 90 degrees from where our line hits the picture plane. So we're going to emulate that down here. There's where our line hits the picture plane. We come out perpendicular to it and we continue on our slope 
and that gives us our height. So that's our height from our vanishing point, from our horizon line, straight up to our auxiliary vanishing point. So we can mark that off here, and now we've located our auxiliary vanishing point. And it's just worth noting that the fact that we're looking uphill means that the auxiliary vanishing point is going to be above the horizon line. So that's how we locate our auxiliary vanishing point above the horizon. Um, now we're going to do exactly the same thing for our downhill slope. So the angle is exactly the same. Now you'll see, working off this wedge here, we have a new direction. So the direction we're moving in is this direction. So we're going to work off this as our hinge line. I say very, very important that you know you account for the direction. So the direction is this direction for this particular line. So this is our line parallel. And we're going to keep the same basic approach. So looking downhill, this is our distance falling below the horizon line. So if you're looking uphill, it's above it. If you're looking downhill, you're looking below the horizon line. Or our auxiliary vanishing point is going to be below the horizon line. Um, like in the last question, we're going to rebat that onto its side. So we'll be able to see the actual height in our plan view. So and like the last question, we're going to mark off our distance along our line. We're going to come out perpendicular. And there's our angle drawn in like so. And from where our hinge line hits the picture plane, we're going to come out perpendicular to it and we're going to continue it on. So there's our height there like that. And it's just worthwhile mentioning that a common mistake that people make is that they take this line here and they continue it on until it hits the picture plane and they take that as the measurement, maybe the distance along there. That isn't the case. It's where the hinge line here, your direction line, hits the picture plane, come perpendicular to it. Because as I say, we're taking this original triangle here and we're just swinging it up. So it is a right angle triangle and it will always be a right angle triangle. So with our H2, this time we're coming below the horizon line, so directly below because we're sloping downhill. So that's our uh, vanishing point. So we have our vanishing points for our level lines and we have our auxiliary vanishing points for our sloping lines worked out. Um, so all we need to do now is just complete the actual exercise in the way that we've normally done it. So looking at our objects, we're going to start off with um, this object here. You can see the object, the front edge here is resting up against the picture plane touching off the picture plane here, so it will be a true height. So in this example, that height is 30 millimeters. So when we project that up, we're able to mark up our 30 millimeters um, and it's preserved. So it won't be smaller or won't be enlarged um, as if it would be if it was in front or behind the picture plane. So once we have that line there, we're just bringing our line. We're going to maybe draw in the front or the back face here like so by projecting it back to the appropriate vanishing point. We want to locate the back corner here, so we go back to our spectator, where it crosses the picture plane, we bring it up, and that completes as our, our back um, surface of our object. In our 3D view, th we do exactly the same thing, so their front edge is on the picture plane, so we draw our lines here, and it's worth noting that these lines here, they're not 3D lines, these lines here are drawn on the picture plane. So it's like someone came along and spray painted those lines onto this flat screen. So they go back to our VP1 there, and then we draw a line from our corner up to our spectator and where that line there pierces through our picture plane gives us our location for our back edge. And you can see it there it is there. There's the line coming from the corner. There's where it pierces the picture plane giving us the back edge. Here's our line going from that where it pierces through the picture plane gives us the back edge there. So there's our image of our back edge on our picture plane. So there is in perspective. There it is in our 3D view. So then we're going to draw in the side of the wedge. So at the side of the wedge, we're going to draw in the base runs level, so it goes to our VP2 in that direction. And then our sloping surface is sloping downhill, so he goes to our AVP2 there. So that's our wedge, like so. And we're going to then do the same thing over here in 3D. So our level line goes up to here, our sloping line goes down here, like so. So there's our wedge. Um, then the next surface is just simply taken by connecting our lines back to our appropriate vanishing points, and that completes the surface like so. Same thing applies here, back to our VP1, because that line going across there is level, and then there's a line sloping down to our AVP2, and that completes wedge number one. For wedge number two, it's exactly the same basic idea. We look at our object. In this case here, the front edge of our object is resting up against the picture plane. Now, 
we can see it doesn't have any height but it does give us the position for that point there because that point is on the ground you can see it's going to be on the ground line so when we project it up it's going to begin on the ground line there so we're able to do like what we did before we just join our lines back so we're drawing this line here as level in this direction here so he goes to our VP1 this line here is sloping upwards so it goes up to AVP1 and like before we locate the back corner by bringing it down to a spectator projecting it up and that draws in the side of our object like so same thing applies over here in 3D we're going to take our edge back to our VP the slope of our wedge goes up to our auxiliary vanishing point and we locate the back corner by joining the back corner of our actual object to our spectator where it crosses the picture plane locates the position on the image so there's the side of our object um, next we're going to do is we're going to draw in the depth of the piece so there just going level across like that so they go up to auxiliary or vanishing point 2 we locate the position and we draw in our uphill slope by going up to AVP1 so there is the top face of our object drawn in um, same thing applies here we find the depth of the piece then we locate the position for the back corner like so and then we draw in our slope by going to AVP1 so there is the top surface of our object drawn in like so so that's pretty much the uh, object itself and I'll just tidy up the thing by just disappearing some of our objects and just in a case that I don't forget when you look at our object there we have a couple little things we need to tidy up you can see from our 3D view one of the objects is hidden slightly behind the other so here we haven't accounted for that so make sure you account for that either with hidden detail or rub it out and um, just before you finish it up so that's a more realistic view of what's actually going on with our object and um, if you want you can shade it in just to make it look a little bit more realistic but all the components are in place there at the moment so we've reached the end or the solution to our question so as usual I hopefully hopefully this has been of some help to you um, and keep looking at the videos for more information Thank you very much.